Hi guys, welcome to my video blog. It's my first video in blog, so it's more or less to test out if you guys like it. So, let's give it a go. Today I will show you how to make your own ESD antistatic or however you'd like to call it mat. Uh, so, you know this. You got table and you, there are those mats. You, you find them in many colors, usually white or blue. Uh, and they protect you, you uh, your components from st ESD or electrostatic discharge. Now we're gonna make it from simple stuff like uh, aluminum foil, some glue, uh, and a tablecloth. All tablecloth. I will already pre-cut it. So let's let's do some theory at the beginning. Okay. Now, what the hell is ESD? Well, ESD stands for electrostatic discharge, and it is the reason for some fried components. Uh, when objects, for example, for example, rub against each other, they build up electrostatic charge. You know, we did all we all did those experiments when you rub the comb against the um, shirt, and it became and it began to attract hair and that's pretty much uh, electrostatic charge. Now, electrostatic charge can discharge if there is unbalance between electrons. If we want uh, to uh, um, actually neutralize this charge, we need to, uh, for an example, ground it. This is the probably best way. We should connect it to something with neutral charge that is big enough so it won't charge up. So, and the best example is earth. Earth is, well, actually ground or however you like to call it. It's, for an example, let's take our main socket. It's got two terminals for electricity and one for Earth. And Earth is, well, it's connected to planet Earth. It's actually just like, for an example, rod in the ground. It provides us um, connection to ground and ground is neutrally charged. That's why we use ground. <coughs> now, um, so how how could we actually uh, make this ESD protection? Well, we should neutralize all the components we work with, we should neutralize our cells and our tools we work with, so that should be no problem with the ground, so we just connect our, us to ground and we're neutralized. But there is one small detail, um, well, if we just, for an example, let's take a component. I got this resistor to here, just for an example. It's not really going to be fried one, this because this one is not going to be fried one because of ESD, but for an example. If we, for an example, hold a resistor and we touch this ESD protection device, this is directly connected to ground. The current, and I am electrically charged, then my charge will go directly through the resistor, so we've done nothing, we just made the ESD happen. So we have to actually safely and slowly discharge electrostatic. So how should we do it? Well, for example, we should um, pass the charge through something resistive. For example, this one mega ohm resistor or something non-conductive. Okay, non-conductive, I mean, not, not, it's high, highly resistive, let's say. So, how is actually this ESD mat constructed and how does it work? Well, it's constructed of three layers, usually. usually. Uh, it can be also two, so just not actually a bottom layer is actually, yeah, bottom layer is cut out. Well, 
The first bottom layer is usually just for structure. Um, it just holds structure and nothing special pretty much. Uh, it's just its job to be to be there. So then there is a conductive layer. We use our aluminum foil for that. And uh, there's a top work place that is non-conductive. Yes. You're gonna before you email me and say, oh no, it's it should be as much as conductive. Yeah, it, if it's as much as conductive, then our charge will flow directly into mat very fast, and that's what we pretty much don't want. We want charge to be dissipated slowly, and that's why uh, it's perfect to have some very high resistivity. For example, I don't know. This PVC actually is non-conductive, but it we say, but it's actually still a little bit conductive. It's just high resistivity, and this means it will pass the electrons very, very, very slowly. And that's pretty much what we want, right? So, how are we going to construct our uh, ESD mat? Well. Top and bottom layers will be made from our old tablecloth, and middle layer will be made from uh, aluminum foil. We use some glue, and for, for to make sure um, edges don't trip, and for connecting, we use some aluminum um, tape. We we might also uh, use one of these. 1 mega ohm resistor if we want to connect uh, some anti static wristband, for example, here's one I made myself, and I'll also make it a way that, um, possible to connect this one to the mat. So let's give it a go. Uh, so now let's start the construction of our SD mat. Now I've already pre cut. The tablecloth I'm going to work on the table I'm going to make ESD mat for. I'm gonna make it for the whole table as you can see. So the first step would be to uh, of course cut the tablecloth and to figure out how are we going to lay out aluminum for I'm probably going to just roll it like that along one one roll an oral here and one a bit higher so they are still connected and then I'm going to glue this on the edges or something I don't know just it doesn't really need much glue just to hold it down uh, then I'm going to glue down the edges with some aluminum tape since it's a bit thicker it will hold uh, the structure of aluminum better and it will make it to not be able to rip so easily inside and then I will use a little bit of aluminum tape uh, at the edge to provide the, uh, a terminal for connecting it, uh, ESD mat to the ground and then I just will add Top layer, glue it down, and maybe trim some, um, trim some edges, and that's it. Let's do it. I've made the first step. I laid out the foil, so apply the glue, put the foil on it, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I left some foil over there, so I I will trim it at the end, and of course also at the other end, and. Now I'll just use something cylindrical, like okay, this tape will do it, and just press it down a bit, this foil so it sticks to the glue, and then I will apply some of the tape there at the middle, so it nicely holds two strips together. Well. I uh, glued the edges for a bit more and added those, as I said, aluminum foil tape uh, strips 
Um, now I'm going to do uh, make terminals for connecting to ground. Actually, provide actually ma make them possible uh, for further making. Now, first what I do is I take my aluminum tape and I just fold it so two glues size is comes together. Then I lay this down about there. It's really hard working so 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 no a bit of non glued size connect to this aluminum foil. You can't rely on the glued uh, sides and then I will uh, make make it uh, roll it uh, under the the mat connection for connecting it to and later creating terminal it comes to the downside so if I want to make this professional like terminals when there is just a this one metal piece there uh, pierce through the mat I can just make a hole and put it in and it will work so this is great thing so I also secured this uh, part with no glue with some more tape to hold it down and it should be conduct a uh, static great so let's continue creating this well, I rolled the top layer in this roll, and so I will now apply glue, uh, more glue, and just unroll it so it gets nicely on. So let's do it. So I glued top layer. I will now trim the edges and add some electrical tape around it. So edges will look nice and maybe uh, I'll later sew it together but that's not really necessary so let's do it so so here is the finished product now I add some electrical tape at the edges so it's nice it looks nicer and that's pretty much it I will probably glue it down to the table with double sided tape and it's not the prettiest job I did, I could make it better but it will work fine I guess. Well there is one small thing I forgot to mention and it seems that is the thing that got me into a trap. Well. I use this plastic uh, tablecloth and seems like when I rub an object to it, it produces more static than it actually dissipates, so that's the only thing you have to watch out for. You should choose the material that is not producing much static for an example if I put a sheet of paper there maybe it should fix the situation for a bit but it's still see now the stat static has dissipated through the paper and through the tablecloth uh, inside the core so it's partial win. Well, you should be really careful about using the materials. That's the thing you don't need to worry about if you buy an anti static mat. But okay, it happens. So, yeah, static, non static. That's yeah. It happens. I just probably have to use this sheet of paper on it and 
actually that's even better for me since I was really frightened about how it will be with if I damage uh, the top uh, layer and this paper is quickly changeable so seems like a win uh, now let's see a finished product well I've covered the whole workspace with paper used some of this painting tape and I've added another strip of aluminum tape there at the edge so when I work and I put my hands on the table I connect this connects my arm through the one mega ohm resistor it's hidden here to the ground wire so another win so it looks quite nice uh, I might uh, consider adding another paper layer there if I want uh, to protect this workspace but it's pretty much fine Th uh, so that's quite well now as you can see here I've got uh, something for next video it's an old 1987 Nintendo Game Boy so why don't we take it apart so this is probably going to be next video so Thanks for watching, see you next time.